For the past five years, I've been in graduate school. But for the past five years, I've also driven back and forth between Stanford and Los Angeles about once a month. And so here are some things that I wish that I could go back and tell Alex of five years ago on her first drive, uh, just when she was starting her PhD. And maybe some of these things will be things that might be helpful to others who are starting their PhD too. So grad school is full of some ups and some downs. I think one of the biggest things I learned in grad school was to roll with the punches. But that doesn't mean that you have to be like impenetrable and like a wall of force and grit. I cried a lot in grad school because sometimes stuff was really hard and I learned that in grad school one of the biggest things that I had to learn was to ask for help. Sometimes that was in life, sometimes that was in lab, sometimes I would waste a month trying to figure something out on my own only to realize that once I asked somebody they were like, oh, the trick is this, and then I would get it done in an hour. Okay, it tastes like raw garlic. Also, when you have those down moments, talk to people. There were so many things that happened in graduate school that I felt alone in and that I was upset about and I thought that it was only me and this wasn't happening to anybody else and it was because I was a bad scientist or I was a bad coworker or whatever it was. And a lot of these happened in third and fourth year. Those are hard years of graduate school. But then later on when I actually talked with people and I figured out that they had been going through the same thing and they too thought that it was only them. So find your support network and talk to people. You don't have to be, you don't have to be everything. You don't have to be a superhero. I mean, now I've got it and it's gonna melt, so I guess I have to eat it. One of the best pieces of advice given to me in graduate school was handed down by a postdoc in my third rotation lab who told me to take data and make it into a figure as soon as I had collected that data. And that was so helpful both because it allows you to more easily see your data and because it means that when you're going to make a presentation or a publication, you already have that figure made. It's already right there. What I would add though, is that you should also take the time to write out a paragraph or two about what you did to collect that data and what it is. Specifically, I would generally do it for experiments where I knew it wasn't going to go any further, so it wasn't going to wind up in a paper, it might just be an appendix in my thesis, and so I would just write up what I did, what the data was, and what the data showed. Super simple, super fast, right? You do this, you write like a page every now and then, and then when I went to put together my thesis, those chapters were so easy because I already had it written, and then there was a figure, and then I just magically had a couple pages of my thesis. Another important piece of advice here is to pick a color scheme and stick with it, then you don't fall into the trap that I did where you get to the end and you're making your thesis and you have all these figures, but none of them are cohesive and none of them look alike, so you have to remake them. Pick a color scheme and pick it early. Also, label everything. Tubes in the wet lab, files in the dry lab, label everything before you put any data into any folder, before you put any liquid into any tube. Label it, label it, label it, label it take way more notes than you think you're gonna need. You're gonna do an experiment and think, oh, I'll remember what volume that was. You will not. You're gonna start to write something down and be like, oh, I'll remember which enzyme I used. You will not. Take more notes than you think you need, I promise. I also found that having a clear, consistent labeling system helped so much. When I first started out in those early notes, I was labeling things experiment one or experiment A and that was not helpful. After about the first year, I started a system where I had the type of experiment it was, so if it was a silencing experiment, it might be SIL, and then I would have the date, and then I would have a double letter code for which experiment it was, and once I had a consistent system for checking everything, it got so much easier to track my results and where everything was going. Pick a labeling system, whatever works for you. One of the biggest lessons that I learned in graduate school was how to embrace I don't know. I feel like so often we all want to come up with an answer when we're asked something, but in science, we don't know all the answers and trying to make something up on the spot is wrong. And you know, you can do your best to make educated guesses, but I think that 
It's really empowering and exciting to be able to embrace the I don't know in life because that means that there's still something to learn. So it's hard. It was really hard for me to be able to get up in front of my department or even to be in a conversation with someone and to admit, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question, but it was fun when I got to follow it up with, but let's find out. And so that's really what science is, is saying, I don't know, but let's find out. And for me, starting to embrace saying I don't know was really empowering. That's a good thing. We should all be saying, I don't know, but let's find out more. Always remember why you started. People go to grad school for really different reasons. Some people go to grad school because they want to be a professor, other people because they want a career in policy, other people because they love science. I went to grad school because I wanted to learn how to ask good questions. I feel like that's a really important skill in life. And I also wanted to learn how to think about answering those questions. And those things are important to me, but I had to keep reminding myself sometimes that that's why I was there. I was there to learn these things because it was really easy to get swept up in comparing myself to the people around me and looking at all their publications and my tiny amount of publications and just feeling awful about the fact that they were doing so much better than me or whatever it was and none of that mattered. I wasn't in grad school to compete with anybody. I wasn't in grad school to become the world's most amazing scientist. That, that wasn't why for me. For me, it was about learning how to ask good questions. And sometimes in the really hard moments or the moments where I felt lost or the moments where I felt like everything was going wrong, reminding myself why I started was really important to me. Now that I'm done, now that I've finished and I've graduated, am I still a scientist? Everyone in my life keeps telling me, yes, of course, that I've done all of this really specialized training to be a scientist, and so I am still a scientist. But part of me feels like it's a job title, and I don't still call myself, you know, an associate producer for my job before grad school, and I don't still call myself a Home Depot employee because I don't work there anymore. Uh, and you know, I, I don't know, am I still a scientist if I'm not doing science every day? This is a question that I think about a lot, and I'm really lenient on this for other people. I think that for other people, I'm like, oh, if you ask questions, you are a scientist. But for myself, I don't know. I feel like now that I'm graduating, I have to hand over those titles, and I don't know if that's right. I don't know if I can still call myself a scientist. I don't know if I can still call myself a geneticist. And I think what I'm settling on is science communicator, because that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, you know, science communication, science video production. But it's, it's weird not being able to call myself a scientist anymore because I've worn that mantle and I have worn that title proudly and excitedly for so many years. And so, I don't know. I, this is one of the big questions of this chapter change in my life. Literally, as I'm moving to this new place and I'm changing what I'm doing on my day to day and really moving on it's really an identity question as well, and I'm curious to see how that develops as things progress and as I keep driving down this road that I'm driving on. Okay, I need to get gas. <laughs>